what's the car doctor welcome back to my top five series where i tell you the top five problem that i see in my shop with different vehicles now, if you're new to my channel you gotta understand this i'm not the channel where i'm gonna tell you how comfortable it is and how good it looks no i'm here to tell you if this thing is gonna put you on side of the road or not and if it's reliable let's jump right into it shall we this patient is a 2016 chevy equinox now, this is the second generation Equinox that ran from 2010 all the way up to 17. This particular Equinox is equipped with the four cylinder 2.4 liter engine. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. They do have three different types of engines, the 2.4, the 3.0, and the 3.6. I'm not gonna be talking about the last two because I don't have that example in the shop. I'm gonna save that for another video. Speaking of engines, these trucks have sister trucks or brother trucks, however you want to say it. That's going to be the Chevy Captiva, the GMC Terrain, um, and I'm probably missing another one. <laughs> this is probably another one I'm out there missing. Someone in the comments, drop down in there and let us know. Now, the reason I'm mentioning the sister trucks is because I don't want you to say, I'm tired of this Chevy Equinox and go out and get a Captiva. You're going to have the same problems. You're getting back in the same thing, pretty much. Just a different body style. Now that I got all that information out the way, let's jump into the first problem that I see in my shop with these Chevy Equinoxes. The first problem is going to be this purge valve right here. I always see them leak. And when they leak, you will have a hesitation upon starting when you first put fuel in your car. Also, you're going to have weird running issues and along with some other codes. The purge valve, the job of the purge valve is to allow gas fumes to enter into the engine to be burnt so they won't escape into the atmosphere. How do you prevent that from going out? Mm, it's nothing that you can do about it. You just have to wait to it to go out on you. The second problem I see a lot on these Equinoxes are gonna be these VVT cylinder weights. They will go out and cause the engine to run funny and cause a particular code. I'm not sure about the particular code. Somebody drop down in the comment. Now, if you notice, I'm starting from the cheap and going up to the most expensive. Now, back up a little bit. How to prevent that? There's nothing that you can do about it, unfortunately. <laughs> like I mentioned, the first two problems, pretty cheap, no big deal. The third one is gonna be a little bit more expensive for you. The third problem is gonna be the annoying crack manifold, exhaust manifold. You're not gonna be able to see it. Um, I do have an example for you. I'm gonna take you to my lobby where I have my engine table. I give a lot of examples on my engine table. So let's go check it out. All right guys, check it out. Now, this is not the same engine that's in the Equinox, but very similar in design. Same leader size, same dual overhead cam. So it's gonna be a perfect example for you. This is an exhaust manifold. The, the exhaust comes out of the head into the exhaust manifold and through the rest of the exhaust system, through the cat, so on and so forth. These like to crack on those equinoxes. The problem with that is if it cracks there, you can have carbon monoxide entering into the cabin. The exhaust goes out the back of the vehicle for a reason, to keep it away from the cabin. Some of the stuff you want to look out for is excessive noise when you get on the accelerator or if the vehicle cranks up kind of loud. I'm like, I'm not kind of used to this noise. What's, what's the problem? Most likely have an exhaust leak. And what will happen as the vehicle warms up, the metal will uh, expand, sealing it up temporarily, and it'll kind of quiet down. But in cold, it'll be, you know, in its rest position. <laughs> and it'll make more noise. How to prevent this? Nothing that you can do, but you please be careful because we wanna keep you safe. Number four, good people, is gonna be this transmission right here. The transmission is located from here on over. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm kind of pointing at it right now. It's kind of buried down in there. They don't have a dipstick. They just have this little field plug right here. So they do give you something to fill the transmission up with, but not check the fluid. I guess it's like that on all vehicles now these days. Can't remember the last time I seen a transmission dipstick. Matter of fact. Now, the reason I think they fail, well, not think, I know they fail, is lack of maintenance. 
you're supposed to change out your transmission fluid, depending on how you drive, every 30 to 60,000 miles, I say. I normally say every 30, it's better safe than sorry. Uh, people who drive more aggressively, like all of us do these days, 30. People who drive very slow and keep the transmission working less, you can push it to 60, let's say that. Now, I am gonna do an honorable mention because I don't see it a lot in my shop. These engines do like to consume oil. Uh, like, let's say you're trying, you have 6,000 mile oil change intervals. You're using like a synthetic oil or whatever the case may be. You're not gonna make it to that 6,000 miles without adding two to three quarts. That's an issue. Now, what you can do, I always recommend to my customers, if it is consuming oil, you most likely have like piston ring issues or some type of internal issue. You can use this product called Lucas Oil Stop Lick. It works very good. It will help you extend those intervals without adding oil. Very good, check it out. Number five, good people, I always save the worst for last, is the annoying timing chain. This issue has been known to kill engines, meaning this engine is an interference engine, and if the timing breaks or something happened to it, the pistons will make contact with the valves. I may have an example to show you. You know me, I love showing examples and helping you guys understand a lot better. Let me go find one for you. All right, I got the perfect example. Something is really smelling good. Man, I, I'm about to jump on the grill tonight, mm -hmm. uh, today after I leave work. What you guys think I should cook? Some ribs, chicken? What you think, sweetie? I don't care, as long as you cook. <laughs> All right, good people. This is a piston. The piston goes up and down in a cylinder, which I'm going to show you a cylinder. This is an engine block. It's completely stripped down. No crankshaft, no pistons, no heads. These are cylinders. These pistons fit directly in the cylinders. So that's how you get, you know, your engine power pretty much. I'm not gonna go big into it because I'm gonna try to stay on topic. These are valves. Uh, you have a set of valves that let the fuel and air in and you have a set of valve, well, one in this case. Um, normally it's like a two valves per cylinder engine. This is a, gosh, four valves per cylinder. <laughs> this is a two valve per cylinder. All right, I got that straightened out. Um, in this situation, you only have one valve that's letting the fuel and air in and one valve that's letting the gases out. So what will happen as these valves are opening and closing, if the timing, something happened with the timing, this valve will be in the up position at the wrong time as the piston is coming up and it'll smack and collide with each other. Um, that's that, that's how it happens. The mistimed engine valve to piston contact. Now, this engine can be saved, it's just you have a lot of people ignoring the symptoms. The symptoms on these engines early time and chain failure signs are time and chain rattle up on startup. You will hear like a flattering, then it'll quiet down. That's one of the symptoms. Um, you will have a check engine light telling you that I think it's a P0016 or P0017, basically timing over advance or something like that. Please do not ignore those symptoms. If you do, it'll lead to timing, you know, engine damage. At that point, you know, you either replace the engine or find yourself a good mechanic that was going to take those heads off and get it fixed. Can you prevent the timing issue? Yes. <clears throat> I see the timing chains normally go out at a mileage of around 100 to like 120, 130. Um, what I would suggest to how to prevent this, if you have this particular engine, is to do the timing chain at 100,000 miles. I know it, it's kind of a pain. So they have to do the chain regardless. Yes, you're going to have to do the chain um, or you're going to have that particular problem. Uh, now, should you own or buy one of these vehicles? Well, let's take a listen to it, shall we? See what the doctor got to say. Hmm, I like what I'm hearing and what she's telling me. I say she's a good buy. The doctor's stamp of approval. Now guys, 
I know y'all always saying Toyota and Honda. And yeah, they're very good and all. But some people don't have Toyota and Honda money. And check out the miles on this bad boy. If properly maintained, this car can go the distance. Uh, I just went away. Let's see, make it wake it back up. Come on, wakey wakey. 247,000 miles. Check that out. Let me go ahead and give her a start so you guys can take a listen. She sounds pretty good. I do hear a uh, cracked exhaust manifold in the back like I was mentioning before. Want to watch out for that. Uh, but for a 250,000 mile car, you can't go wrong with that. I think this is key, good people. If you maintain this car, it can go the distance, as you saw. Speaking of this, the distance, this looks like the original engine. Um, it doesn't have any junkyard riding on it. The griming dirt is matching the transmission. Normally when I see a shiny transmission or vice versa, a shiny engine, that particular component has been replaced. And I'm not seeing that. So that's pretty impressive, I say. Guys, I hope this helped you. If it did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Alex Car Doctor out. See you guys on the next one.